Hey guys, all right, awesome. Today I have Susie Moore on and we are stoked. She's got tons of fun energy, I can already tell. And we've only been on for like two minutes so far. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, I'm so excited that you're here, Susie. Now Susie is based out of New York and she's a confidence coach and an author. She's been featured on the Today Show, Forbes, Oprah.com, is that true for real? <laughs> I, I mean, I know it's true, but like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the good news is most people can do this. They just don't know where to begin. Absolutely. And I'm sure if you're listening already, you're like, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Tell me all of the things. So we're going to dive on in and have a little chat about visibility and authority. Two things that Susie has done a phenomenal job of building. So Susie, welcome. Thank you, Rachel. It's so exciting to chat with you and to be on your show. So thanks for having me. I'm so excited. So one thing that I'm really curious about is you have been in this game for a little while. Mm -hmm. What did you do before you got started in the world of entrepreneurship? Yes, uh, so great question. I have a corporate background. So I was a blazer wearing, uh, business card holding. I would have had a briefcase if people actually had those <laughs> these days. But um, no, I was, my, my background is corporate. I used to work in, it was called programmatic video software. Um, so I worked for different Silicon Valley startups. And then the last startup that I worked for was purchased by a Fortune 500 company. So I worked there for um, a little over a year as sales director. And I just knew it wasn't my life. It was fine. It was cool. It suddenly had lots of perks. Um, but I just kind of knew around kind of you know, nearing the age of 30 that it wasn't going to be my life's work. I probably got the most out of it that I probably could and that I should just be bold and do, do, do what kind of felt right for me. I love that so much. I never quite had the full corporate experience, mm. but when I hear about it, I'm like, I think I like entrepreneurship better just from <laughs> yeah. what I've heard. <laughs> yes, and you know, it's interesting because I think a lot of people do want to kind of shift out and that it's a great idea because um, there's no such thing as job security no matter where you are. But if you have a corporate background, I mean, I think a lot of people discount their skills. If you hustled in like the corporate, like corporate bill, there are a lot of skills that you have to just transfer over. You know how to often work a lot, like have a lot of stamina. You know how to work really well with people. You have the advantage of often seeing a lot of different divisions. So I think it's good to, um, to understand that if you do want to make a shift, there's probably already a whole lot going for you that you probably might not even realize. I love that perspective. Mm -hmm. So you made a big shift into entrepreneurship right around the time you were 30, right? You were like, this is... Yeah, full-time, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And one thing I think most people don't realize is how at first it can be so scary to step out and do your mm -hmm. own thing. Kind of take us back to that time for you. What was that like saying, I'm going to do my own thing? Because you were a mm -hmm. high-paid corporate individual, right? Yeah, yeah. I was making half a million. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to well, fall over. I, I, and the thing is, and I, I, I felt angry at myself because I was like, why can't this be enough? Why Ooh. can't I just be satisfied with this? And look, I come from my very, very humble beginnings. I grew up, you know, on welfare and I still support my mom financially. So um, I felt kind of as irresponsible, especially being in my position with my background to take a risk. But then the way that I just kind of rationalized it was I was living my worst case scenario because my worst case scenario was, okay, I'll go out on my own for a bit. I don't like it. And I just take another job like this one, you mm -hmm. know? And so the risk is just such an illusion. And so, but in the beginning, yes, it was scary. And when I, I mean, I said to my husband, I'm, I'm quitting. I, I've kind of had a plan in mind of a specific date. I was waiting for a specific bonus. Um, but then I went on vacation, came back and a big deal that I had fell through because of a product feature. And, uh, and so I lost that bonus wouldn't have come through. It wouldn't have been as big. And I was like, I said to him, I'm, I'm going to quit like tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh. What was his reaction? Because yes. wow. <laughs> I know, I know. I, and I mean, I, I have to be very grateful because I know every, you know, people have different spouses and different kind of levels of responsibility and so forth. But, um, he'd seen me side hustling for a while. You know, I was side hustling. I was already interviewing really cool celebrities for places like Marie Claire. Uh, I already had, you know, a really full weekend of clients. I was kind of getting traction with, I understood email list building slowly. And I just, I mean, the way that I think about it is if you succeeded at something you don't really love, but you like, then when you can unleash yourself on something that feels really good that you do love, then the sky's the limit and you just have to trust that 
the success will continue or just maybe take a different direction. So uh, he was very supportive and now he works with me full time. So oh, I love that. I work with my husband full time and it's, it's the best, right? Oh my gosh. It's amazing. Cause you know, I'll never forget when I told my family, like I'm speaking on a stage with Gary Vaynerchuk mm. and the whole family was like, who's that? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't understand. So being yes. able to share those wins with somebody that you love and having them understand is one of the greatest feelings. It is. It really is. And I think it's probably not for everyone because I've seen, you know, very different types of couples and, you know, there's no right or wrong way of doing it, but um, it's a great, it's a great perk if it works for you. And if you can have the option to just be together and do what kind of feels good, then when you kind of do have the authority of your life, then kind of up to you what you want to do which is magic and very addictive <laughs> once you get started as you know <laughs> I love that so much now one of the things that you did very very well is you got visible like mm -hmm. yeah. your name was everywhere and I always preach that visibility is such it's an underrated thing and it's mm -hmm. everything I think visibility is huge mm -hmm. it's hard because you don't see the immediate ROI of visibility but there's mm -hmm. a long-term benefit mm -hmm. so into that pretty early. Tell me a little bit about like your experience with visibility and yeah, what's made you so good at it. Yeah. So I agree. I mean, in the beginning I thought to myself, okay, so I've got my LinkedIn network. I've got my just general corporate network, which is nice, but it's going to run out. And at that stage, I just wanted one-on-one -on -one clients in the beginning. That was my mission just to, you know, fill, fill up, fill up all of my spots. And I, I just knew that would run out and I didn't want to go out there and network. I didn't want to um, ask for referrals necessarily unless they were just forthcoming. And I just thought to myself, there has to be an easy way. <laughs> there has to be. I'm obsessed with ease, right? Like, there has to be an easy way. And I didn't want to ha have this mistake that you see a lot of people have where they spend a lot of money on their business before they are really making a lot of money. And I see it a lot, I'm sure you do too, where people have like a beautifully designed website with no traffic right? Or a, a gorgeous Instagram page with my followers. I mean, or a YouTube account that, you know, too scared to upload the videos. You know, I was just like, I want to start making money immediately. My side hustle has to be profitable immediately. And then only side hustle dollars are allowed to go back into my hustle, not my salary dollars. And, uh, and so I had this policy about it. I was very strict about. And so I actually just being bored in my cubicle many, many an afternoon, most people are, I think at work, uh, I would just read stuff like mind, body, green or something you know, like well and good greatest. And as I became a coach, I noticed that um, a lot of the, the word coach would just pop out at me that I hadn't noticed before. Yes. And I noticed that a lot of articles were written by sleep coaches, health coaches, I guess more general life coaches. And in a very, you know, in a moment where I just really didn't overthink a thing, I was like, I can do that. Um, and I just submitted, you know, five, maybe 600 words to Mind Body Green, just like in the moment, wrote it, wrote it in a bar that night. And um, the, the piece was called, uh, no is the new black or no is the new yes. So how to, how to say no more in your life and still do lots of cool things. And, uh, and then it was shared 4,000 times, this piece that I didn't really consider much. And I realized the size of the audience that media can bring you for free. Yeah. And like you said, like there's, there's cred with media, you get a lot of authority because people just see your name and then all these media properties that sometimes you know, over a hundred years old, they spend millions building them. They give you that authority the second you have your name associated with them. So I was like, this is the way I was like, this is going to be the way. And, uh, and I, I, and I still do it, Rachel. I still do it every month. Wow. What's so crazy is I didn't know that that article was written by you. I read that article. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. I read that article. So I just looked it up and I was like, yep, that is absolutely the same article. So oh this is gosh. crazy. That and is so yeah. visibility builds like so many seeds and a great foundation. Um, so you just went for it. Would you say that was one of the biggest things was just saying yes to visibility? Absolutely. And it compounds over time. So mm -hmm. for example, that piece that you saw, that's still in circulation, but it's, it, it must've been 2014 that there's a date on it. So uh, now it's 2019. It's still in circulation. Content never expires. It's always out there. in yes. the ether. I love what Gabby Bernstein says. She says, God is my publicist. Oh <laughs> my gosh. So I, I always think I create this content and it lives forever and I still get leads. And every week my husband and I have a meeting and we talk about, you know, where our sales are coming from, leads, et cetera. And it's really awesome when I just see that a lot of our sales or, of whatever product or service come from something I wrote for the Huffington Post in 2015. You know, it's just like, oh, still out there. You know, so yes. people share in different ways. Um, but yes, I just decided I think that thinking too much is the problem. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I just, I didn't think about it. I still haven't really thought about it. I, I'm not a journalist. I have no training or experience or credentials actually in anything. I have a high school education and the rest is self-taught. So um, yeah, you don't have to be fancy. You don't have to be famous. I didn't even have a website back then. It was, I was very, very, very rudimentary, but it got me started. And that's all you need, like an imperfect start, but just to start, I think. I love this. And it's so funny because I didn't know, sometimes when I bring guests on, they'll say things where I don't necessarily agree, but I'm not going to disagree. I just say, oh, that's an interesting perspective. Yeah. But I am so aligned with your belief of like, you have to be profitable. You have to make money. Mm. You don't need perfection. Just start. You know, like I, I still to this day, my website is just very basic. It's a mm-hmm. funnel that we built like in a weekend. Fantastic. And, I yeah, love it. And that's totally- Good enough. Yes, absolutely. Good enough. I swear this is going to be the title of the, the another. I'm working on my next book right now, but the next one, it's going to be like the power of freaking good enough. Like oh. good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, and the only way you get better is through action. So if you do good enough, consistent action, I think you become quite good. I absolutely agree with this. Oh my gosh. I'm like in love with you. Like this is amazing. You know what? This is what people who get stuff done, they see it in each other and they're like, I see you. And then you, and then you see it in others. And then you're like, as soon as you see action takers, we spoke briefly about this before, um, you just love them because you're like, ah, she's going to be okay. This one's going to be, this one's going to go far. Absolutely. That's, and that's a huge part of it is just taking action. Mm -hmm. I think we Mm -hmm. overthink things to death. And yes. I mean, I know that there have been times where I've had to just say, tonight I launch it. Broken, <sighs> imperfect, whatever it is, tonight I have to launch it. We'll perfect it over time. Oh my gosh, I love that. My husband is so nervous of those words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I think- oh. <laughs> next week the membership site is gonna go you know and he's like what (laughs) (laughs) oh my gosh but it's true I think but this is I mean it's it's true in business but it's just true in life nobody knows how how to be a parent nobody knows how to be a business owner nobody knows how to be like a a good spouse like you just you go and then you do your best and you learn and you just try and have fun and enjoy the whole thing because that's the point (laughs) Absolutely. That was one of the things that surprised me most about becoming a parent. Like I'll never forget when we were supposed to leave the hospital and they don't tell you anything. And I was 21 and they're like, all right, go home. And I'm like, I don't know what to do anything. Do I give her water? Like, (laughs) how do I keep a human alive? You know, I know it's true. And look, only parents say this. And yet somehow you raise these great kids that are kind and balanced (laughs) and cool, you know, because if you had to know everything ahead of time, like you, it's like if you were on a road trip and you had to know every single stop, there were no roadworks from here to like, you know, you know, from New York to California, you would never go anywhere. You just need to see a little bit ahead, like a little bit further ahead and then just keep going because that's all life ever is right just like a little bit further ahead so Um, relax (laughs) I love it so much now one of the things that's really cool about visibility and authority is that Mm -hmm. the two tie into each other Mm -hmm. and while for you the process of getting visible led to authority and when when people say like okay what does authority mean Mm -hmm. um there are different ways to define it I'd love to hear how you define authority Yes. Oh, I love that. Uh, so essentially the word authority, the origin is Latin author from the word author, right? So when you think about it, like an author, like if you're creating any type of article or guest post, you have an author page, you're given an author page on any publication. So it might be timing, glamour, whatever it may be. So you have an author page. So it's actually exactly or directly derived from actually creating and being this voice, like being this voice that people can, can consume. So Wow. Um, authority, I think, is far more easy to access, far more easy to create for yourself than people think. It's not defined by credentials. It's really defined by action. Because if you've read the book, Think and Grow Rich, which I'm sure a lot of people have, <laughs> um, yeah. he says in there, knowledge isn't power, it's only potential power. And so if you are just using your power, what it is that you know, your experience is sharing them. The reason I, I managed to get myself booked and in a place to confidently leave a very sweet paycheck was because I thought, you know what, I've got these editors I know now, I can just release more content. And I was writing about all sorts of things, being divorced when I was in in my early twenties, growing up, uh, you know, with like mental illness, growing up with addiction, um, all sorts of things. I was just telling my experience as an imperfect human, but with some 
tips, hacks, suggestions on if you're going through any of these things, this might be helpful for you. Um, yeah. That's enough. You only have to be a little bit further ahead than the next person. The way I often say it is like, if you know a language, you yeah. don't have to be perfectly bilingual. You know, it doesn't have to be your you know, mother tongue to teach somebody else like how to order a taxi, how to order a coffee, you know, yeah. yes, left and right. You just need to know a little bit to help. And so if you can help someone a little bit with anything, like really anything, then uh, you're in a great place to actually claim your authority just by sharing and teaching what you know. That is so powerful. Now, when it comes to visibility, what are some of the tips that you would give for the person who says, what, what do I do? Like, where do I even start? What is visibility? Yeah. What would you recommend? Well, I think about it in a media sense because uh, I love social media, for example, but I'm talking about something else here. So social media, for example, is great. Uh, you know, having a YouTube platform, Pinterest platform, I have all those too, and they're fantastic. But when I think talk about visibility specifically, I mean in the media because um, I can have my own nice blog and it can get a certain amount of traffic, but it won't get the 100 million views that Business Insider gets every month, for example. So I think about leveraging existing media to share your voice and essentially give yourself a microphone. What you know, again, imperfectly, that's enough to begin. But if you're thinking, I want to be visible and, uh, you know, I think, you know, I, I don't know where to begin. First of all, congratulations. The decision is the most important thing, right? Like saying, okay, I'm ready. Some people never get there. And so if you're like, I'm ready, I want to do it, then the first thing I would do is first say, well done me. This is a really great move. And then I would think, where are your audience online? That's actually probably just the first most basic question, which can be easy to kind of overlook just the excitement of thinking I want to be everywhere. I would think, you know, is it moms? Is it corporate people? Is it vegans? Is it, you know, athletes, whoever? Um, and then think about where they are. And then the largely the websites or media properties that have the most traffic. Mm, how those audiences that. yeah i love that and the best way is just to reach out like you did with mind body green right yes and often it's the the media you're reading like yeah. i was reading mind body green i'm like well people like me uh, reading this stuff and i want to attract i guess somebody like me you know who's yeah. open-minded and who like who believes in spiritual stuff and and so often it's where you are that's already a really big clue but then yeah. Yeah, you understand who it is you understand that there's just you know simple pitch process editors make decisions everywhere and editors need content so if you think that i don't want to bother anyone you know or an editor or producer is really important and or you know there's kind of scary Editors and producers need content. It's what makes media continual, like continually go around. We, like we need it. Yeah. And um, my editors tell me that sometimes they have to put up 15 pieces a day. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. exhausting. I know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like editing 15 pieces. <clears throat> But of course, nope. traffic, being personal and social, keep, you know, like search engine, like yes. optimization, all these things that um, you don't know about until you kind of start learning more about it, which is always cool. But yeah, you're doing uh, the media world a favor if you're sharing a useful story that's going to be of benefit somehow to their readers. That is amazing. And I feel like that in itself is going to be an aha for tons of people. When you think about the idea of sending an, a content piece, an authority piece to a big especially a content producer, a content publisher, Yes, you're doing them a favor. You're not yeah. asking for a favor. You're helping them because they have 15 pieces a day that they have to put out. Oh my gosh. Exactly. And then I would spend a bit of time like um, searching around the type of properties you'd like to be on, yes. see what their voice is. Is it kind of fun? Is it light? Is it quite serious? And then you kind of want to think, okay, so this is their tone. And then mm -hmm. you, once you play around with it, you start to adopt, like, adopt different tones with ease, the same way that you're not the same person necessarily are with your parents as you are with your clients. You know, you can kind of, you learn to adapt and you realize the whole media world can just completely open up to you. And then you just kind of keep going and it gets easy. The more you do it, the easier it gets because then you have all this social proof of where you've been. I love that so much. The more you do it, the easier it gets. Yes. With visibility, media, authority, all of these beautiful, beautiful things. Yes. Okay. I want to do a couple of things that I think would just be really fun. Can I ask you some like lightning round questions? Oh, yes. And I don't have them prepared because okay. I don't ever do cookie cutter anything. So we're going to just have some fun. Okay. Love it. Yes. All right. So who is your celebrity doppelganger? I have one in mind for you right now, but. Um, so people tell me, um, uh, the woman who was, um, I, I forgot her name. She was in the movie with Michael Douglas where she boiled his rabbit. <laughs> Glenn Close? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> a, a more glamorous, much more glamorous version of Glenn Close. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I can see it a little, but 
Who did you have? I, I see Rosie Huntington Whitley. Oh, wow. Oh, I'll take that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Remember the other one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will take. So thank Amazing. You. Okay. What book are you reading right now? Oh my gosh. I'm, well, oh, I, I'm always reading lots of books. Yep. Um, Me too. I've got a stack of four right now that I'm working on. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, right now yes. I just, I'll tell you what I just ordered because I can remember it. Um, Digital Minimalism, I think it's called. Okay. Uh, by the same author who wrote Deep Work. Wow. Because, you know, it's always good to be clean, clean of lots of distractions. Yes, absolutely. What is your favorite fiction book? Oh, probably The Picture of Dorian Gray. <gasps> oh my gosh. You know, I read an abridged version of that when I was a kid. And oh, so good. I think it was a little too deep for me at that point. It was so haunting. You might, have, you might want to try it now and you'll just yeah. love it. Truly. Oh, I like to reread it. Oh, The Alchemist. The Alchemist. The Alchemist. I have not yeah. read that. <gasps> oh, Rachel, you must. I will read it. I That's love what... reading so much. I always have like, let's see, out of my stack of four right now, two are fiction, two are nonfiction. So Perfect. Perfect. fiction kind of disconnects. It's so nice to just read a story, you know? You will love The Alchemist. I'm excited for you to read oh it. Oh my gosh. I yeah. can't wait to read it. Okay. What is your go-to late night craving snack? <gasps> oh my gosh. So <laughs> many. And I, I love those gummy bears. Anything those like the, the six-year-olds eat, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. How do you order your coffee? Oh, um, I like to make it myself actually. And I just, I use an espresso machine and I use this nice, um, sweet almond milk. Ooh, yummy. Um, what is a trip on your bucket list that you have not yet taken? Well, we actually just booked, we've been booking a bit of travel this year and we're going to, um, Istanbul. I've never been to Turkey and to Lisbon in April. Whoa. All I know about Istanbul is it was once Constantinople, but now it's Istanbul. That's like, right. Yes. yes. That's all Istanbul. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And I'll ask you one last question. You have to go buy candles for your office. What scent do you get? There's actually a, can of, a one called cannabis that I really like. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what store you ordered those from because I've seen the store. <laughs> That's um, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Beautiful. So, okay. I'm sure everyone is loving this interview. I love the energy that you bring. This has been so much fun. What do you have going on? Where can people learn about the world of Susie? Yeah. So the best uh, place, if you want to know a bit more about media and guest posting and how it works and to get rolling, um, you can check out a free workshop I have. It's called getrockstarpr.com. Otherwise Amazing. I have a ton of free general blog life, awesome confidence advice at susie-more.com. Amazing. Amazing. Susie, thank you so much for joining me. This was a blast. Thank you, Rachel.